Okay, good evening, folks. <clears throat> Time for some more painting. Been on a tear lately, and um, we want to keep tearing. So over the weekend, we finished up the uh, Valachian Army. And they went to battle last night. Video of that is up. Check it out. We did it in a uh, Saloy silliness format. So that's a minimum of six Saloy each, which is um, actually why I painted that extra stand of Saloy for that army, it was specifically so I could run them in that type of event. And um, as planned, the next thing on the list is going to be the Moldavian Knights, which is why you see a little banner down there. And these are all Essex figures, these three. Let's see if we can zoom these up. I'll clean my work area here, and like everything is gone. It's like nice and easy to think. Now I just need a drill sergeant to keep me in line. Let's see if we can bring this little thing up here. Here we go. Let's zoom in. These are Essex Miniatures guys. Got the General and two others. So, you know, you know the drill. You do the General last, so we're going to do one of the others. Let's just do the standard guy next, okay? And I believe we're going to try to make this guy look like Stefan the Great. So um, we're going to uh, give him a light-colored horse. So the other two probably are not going to have light-colored horses. So let's go ahead and do this guy. These guys are wearing full plate mail. And, um, and they have long hair peeking out from behind their helmets. And mustaches, both of them, just like the leader. They should paint up pretty nice. We'll see. All right, let's let's zoom out of this a little bit and see if we need to change the paper or not. I think I said I needed to change the paper, so we'll see. Um, I could probably get away with not changing it, but I definitely need to add some some water to this. So let's go ahead and wet this. I'll be right back. It's going to depend on you guys for the most part and that just means if if I'm entertained I'm gonna keep doing this if it ends up being a slow evening well then we'll find something else to do I'm kind of low on energy but I'm like ah, I got an opportunity to get some painting done I want to knock these guys out so for those you guys who do not know what the plan is we got to finish this stand of Moldavian Knights, which is a Knight General option for the same army. And then we'll do some Polish Allies, probably four stands of them. And then we'll run into the Byzantines. All right. Get the, the Tome of Brushes here. And let's grab a brush that we're going to use. couple of them to paint the horse that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the horse up yeah okay we have a visitor there you are Ola. you need an h you need an h for that one um 
Because I think what you typed was just hola, that's a wave. Like, catch the wave, hola. Welcome, Mr. Carter. I tried to get on here as early as I could. How'd I do? Better than most days. Okay, we need to get... I did too good a job of picking all this up. I still got stuff on the couch, though, that I didn't get a chance to finish, but... We needed to kill some of this chaos. I get distracted by the chaos. All right. So, horsey colors. Well, we want a brown one, but we don't want one that's super, super dark. Let's do this as flat earth for one of them. Let's get these two guys out of the way. Let's see if we can find a space to work. Brushes are actually too nice. There we go. That's a shittier one. Yep, I got a half hour before I fall asleep. Chug some coffee. <laughs> All right, we got this cheapo black over here. We're gonna use some of that. Oh my goodness, I got rid of everything. I eliminated this, the magic juices, and I put them away too. Magic juices. Lubricating drippings. Non-stick. That's kind of what really their biggest advantage is. If it's keeps the paint from sticking to oh really? You're gonna start blowing over here? Organize everything and everything's in the wrong place. Typical. All right. Let's paint the entire horse in this color right here. So I don't know how long we're going to be able to do this, but we're going to give this a shot. It's only three figures. And obviously, I'm not going to get them all painted tonight, but maybe I can get halfway done with this one. Because this weekend coming up may be a traveling weekend, which means I'll be less than uh, productive.
two people here. John Carter and the and the quiet one. <laughs> you don't have to speak up if you don't want to. I'm sure it's not female. Looked at my stats the other day and it was like not a single female viewer. I was like, man. Good thing I didn't have ulterior motives for starting this video channel. <laughs> hey, I have I have stuff that just doesn't appeal to that demographic. It's fine. I'll go in the craft store. I'll be the only dude at the craft store. They always look at me like there's something wrong with me. Well, there is something wrong with me, but it's not because I'm at the craft store. Like, Can I help you with something? I said, yeah. Yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at buttons I can use as shields. <laughs> or whatever. No, I really don't like explaining to people that aren't going to know what, the, what this hobby is about. It's really annoying to just get... It's really annoying to get people that get confused looks and they just don't have a clue what it is. It finally hit me the a couple of years ago when I realized that you know people don't understand that we use we're playing a game with dice. Well, you're playing historical war games. Why bother? You already know how it's going to turn out. Didn't understand it. Involved dice and it wasn't gambling. I appealed to man. There you go. Hey, good thing I'm born in this day and age. That's a that's a happening thing these days. There's been uh, several people have brought up on different on different venues, whether it's been on Facebook or what have you, about uh, not wanting a war game because of the current conflict going on. And uh, yeah, I understand there's some people that probably don't want to do conflicts, but you know this isn't real conflict. This is just a way to learn about history and participate in stuff like that but you know if you have reservations about why you don't want to do any war gaming I, okay that's, that's fine with me i'm i'm a devout pacifist every day well let me rephrase that so far in my life i have been a devout pacifist <laughs> every day so you know i want to play i enjoy violent video games when i play video games and stuff like that because it's just Something that I just, I'm not exposed to, thankfully. But. No, nobody's making you, nobody's making you a war game. And there's been a whole lot of that going on and a lot of people. Lots of people making videos on why they feel about the conflict a certain way. and There's nothing I can do about it, so I might as well just plug along. Hey, maybe I'm providing a, uh, a service for people that want to think about stuff that's not really important and get them through the, through the day. Therapy. I like to call this. Therapy does not um, induce a hangover. There's a local game group here in town. They like playing board games, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, but they're not historical. They're not combat oriented. You know, they're like 
doing stuff you could do in real life, you know, like growing plants and shit, you know, it's like, I can do that in real life, you know, I don't want to play a game for that, but hey, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, that's fine. It just doesn't, doesn't get my juices flowing. The allegory of Plato's cave. Oh boy, here we go. We all live in a cave thinking that we see that what we see is real and the full story. But what we see is only a shadow of reality projected on the cave wall by puppeteers behind us. Okay. Well, that now that makes a now a picture that I just happened to see today, coincidentally, makes sense why someone posted that. There's stuff going on in the world where we don't know what's going on. Man, there's, there's stuff happening that there's got to, because none of it makes any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Like the, uh, like the veterans I've met, you know, the World War II veterans I've met, you know, they've, they have vast different experiences depending on what little piece of the pie they were involved in. And, um, I don't think I've ever spoken to a World War II vet that was in the Pacific that had anything kind to say about the Japanese, though. And I don't blame them. I mean, you know, I get it. You're trying to kill me. I'm not going to like your people. <laughs> you have to speak an allegory on Facebook to avoid arguments and bans. Well, arguments are easy to avoid. I just silence people. You know, if, if you put, and I do this all the time, I'll go on Facebook and... I tend to not put controversial things on my Facebook page, but I am friends with people that do put controversial things on Facebook page, on their Facebook page. And if I agree with them, I'll make a comment. But if I disagree with them, I just leave them alone because it's their doorstep. It's kind of like you're going up to somebody's house and you don't like their doormat, so you're going to, you know, take a dump on it. It's their doormat. It's their house. Let them do whatever the hell they want. Now, if they start messing with your stuff, that's different, but... That's just common decency, you know. But I'm not interested in converting people. I don't like arguing. Uh, I'm not one of those people that, you know, I didn't go to law school because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> not that I could have afforded to go to law school. I'm just saying I'm not, I'm not interested in, in, in fighting lost causes. And um, um, But that's just how it is. And if somebody comes and wants to cause trouble in my house, then I just, I just silence them. I don't even respond to them. They're just like, you're, t you're dead to me, you know. I'll just like, block, done. I think people should put whatever the hell they want on their own page. It's their own page, you know. But then I know, I know several people that actually enjoy getting into arguments with people. And it's like, you must have like a work, you're, 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 your time at work must be like, you know, worry free and everything goes right. Because the last thing I want to do is have conflict when I'm not being paid. I don't want to conflict when I'm being paid, much less when I'm not being paid. But, um, hey, that's just me. So if I go to somebody's page and they put something that I don't like, I just, I leave them alone. You know, I don't try to correct them or. It's not worth my time. So there's too many people that want to get the news to reinforce their own position instead of like, let's find out what the damn truth is. Well, 
I see comments calling people ignorant gammon. I don't even know what the hell a gammon is. Simply because they disagree with the crowd. It's rude. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to change anybody's mind. Ignorant gammon. I'm going to start calling people that. And they won't know what it is. And then, then, then see, I'm right. You are an ignorant. Have people always argued this much? Or just the internet makes it real easy to throw stones and not get your ass beat? Or maybe there's just too many people that didn't have a father figure growing up, and that's what the problem is. I don't know. Maybe all of those. Maybe none of them. Me too. I don't get involved. Keyboard warriors. That's right. Keyboard commandos. I actually saw somebody made... <laughs> They made like a, you know, you you can wear, you can get those BDU shirts and stuff like that that have the Velcro stuff on them. They make hats for them too, and they had made, they had made a, a a Velcro patch for keyboard. And I forget what it looked like, but it was it was funny. Keyboard Commando. What was the other one that I saw? Real fat people that are like ready to go to ready to go to war. Somebody call them. Okay, meal team six. <laughs> people that are ready to join a militia. Gammon is meat. Sounds like a French word. Gamon. I need to eat some gamon. Keyboard commandos. Yeah. The internet gives everybody a voice and some people don't deserve one. If you're out just to cause trouble, you know. If you're, you know, if you're one of those people that likes to yell uh, fire in a crowded movie theater, we'll have the right to say it. Uh, that's just bad form, dude. You know, you don't do stuff like that. Man, I like painting horses. I know lots of people don't, but... It's all the horse and none of the smells. I haven't been on... I haven't ridden on a horse in about two years. We're going about once a year there for a while. And, uh, you know, something happened that kind of uh, stopped that. We did that five or six years. No, we don't own any. You just you go somewhere and mind if I ride your horse. <laughs> yes, it's ham. This is a Moldavian army. What number? It's the same one as a Valachian one. It's book 465. What makes it Moldavian, and you would only know this if you had the DBMM book, I think. I don't think it explains it in the regular rules. Uh, but if you play uh, Valachia, so Dracula, you have a cab general. This guy has a knight general. That's the only difference. And again, if you look in the DBMM book, you realize that the allies, when they have, the, this army can have a Polish ally. But the Valachians never had the Poles as allies. The Moldavians did. So again, there's lots of juicy stuff in DBMM. And I bought the books, even though I have no intention of ever playing the game. But there's lots of juicy information in there that I don't mind knowing. 
So I still got them anyways. This helps you make decisions when you're like, okay, well, why, what, why should I do this? You know. So, but it's the same army. It is the same army. Except for the general. Book 465. And I'm going to keep their win-loss records separate. Because I can. So... All right, a little bit of light there, and then we're done with the horse color here. I think that's a little too much. I think I may actually have an opportunity for the first time. Well, I always could, but with good reason to order some forged and battle figures. I got my eye on a pack of them for my Byzantine thing. And I think I'm going to do them because they, um, they're really nice to look at. I bet they'll paint up really nicely. But a Byzantine morph army. I'm, I'm going to be doing three different armies at once. Well, two of them is just the A and the B of it, and then I'm doing an earlier one. So, the cavalry should all be compatible. Just a matter of putting in some extra elements and going from there. You have all the first edition DVM books. The info is copy-pasted from those. Mm-hmm. Okay, I gotta put my glasses on and see what the hell I'm showing you guys. Ah, it always looks like shit here. Lighting is just too powerful. All right, let's paint the metal on this guy. Heavy metal. He's fully armored, except his face. He's got long hair in the back. And a mustache. I don't know why it was more common for these folks to have mustaches and not. I'm just like, if you're going to shave, you either shave or you don't. It just seemed like too much trouble. Like, I'll shave, but I won't shave that part of my face. All right. I think I need to use a more detailed brush here. Speaking of shaving, I need to shave in the morning. Okay. He's got leather-like boots, so we'll skip that. I'm not going to lie to you, it was nice for a change and not play with a, with a blind general last night. It was, it was nice.
it's time to dial that back anyway, so our show that's coming up, we don't have any of the games running with Blind General. going to drop some Nolan Oil on this guy just to give it some extra depth. Okay. It's the metallic parts on this guy. Let's see if there's any, any coffee left. I'm already feeling like I'm dragging. Ah. A stellar conquest into three others. Be right back. Blind General is interesting, but I kind of prefer the normal version of Spectator Sport. Maybe try letting the viewer see the dice roll. Oh, that way they can they can look away if they don't wish to see. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a I think it's a cool way of playing all kinds of different ways. I can tell you what, I really enjoyed playing the Dracula army. I don't mind Saloy. I don't mind skirmishers. I'd rather have skirmishers than light horse. If skirmishers won't get destroyed by bow fire, 
And I think very highly of Bowfire because many of my victories have been because of Bowfire. So actually there was some guy on a forum one time that said, I don't know how to use, seems like bows suck. I'm like, sounds like you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, there's not one troop type that, you know, that, that's good for everything. But, uh, you know, you can exert force with bows and never get into a situation where your life is in danger because you could do it at a distance. That's not saying that they're good at everything, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty powerful indeed. And I can tell you because the first two armies I painted never had any. And uh, Aaron Macy, you are part of the Russian colluders. Congratulations. And we do not want commercial content or spam. See ya. Why did they come here? They're not going to get any traction. I mean, why do, they, why do people send junk mail in the mailbox? I'm not going to go to your... I'm not buying your made-up stuff. Leave me alone. Okay. This guy needs some non-oil non love. As soon as I find it, it's over here. It doesn't go there. But man, I got a lot done this last weekend. And honestly, I'm on a pretty good tear right now. So I want to keep that going. I've been really happy the way things have turned out. That hill that I did for the, um, the impaled skeletons turned out a lot better than I had envisioned. So it's nice when things turn out better than you thought they were going to. It's empowering. And those are the first 3D printed things I've painted. Well, other than the, the than the um, the Pope's throne, but you know that's kind of all together. It's not really flimsy or anything. I don't think that the I don't think there's any danger of those things like breaking or anything like that. I mean, not any more than if they were cast metal. So we'll see. I did look through all their wares to see if they made anything that was really cool, but. No, not really. Didn't really see it. Didn't really see anything that jumped out at me. We done. We ready for his facial? Look at drinking coffee and yawning. Where's the black at? Over here? We might as well have this near it as well. Well, my daughter claims she doesn't want to do what we were going to do over the whole weekend, just on Sunday. So if that's the case, then we'll still have a normal painting session on Saturday. We'll see.
We got plenty to do. We got plenty to do and plenty that I want to do. And we already got this flag already up, ready to go, so. Now the guy that's carrying the banner will have on his shield the same coat of arms for Moldavia. That's, I think, what I'm going to do. And then this guy's going to have a different one. And there's just not a lot of information on these guys. So we're going to have to wing it a little bit. But I'm not going to invent something from scratch. delicate brush. Oh, hold on one second. I'm being summoned. I'll be right back.
Sorry about that. That's what happens when I try to do painting during normal hours or during hours when other people are awake. Okay, let's finish doing his. Um, oh, we're looking for a brush. That's what we're doing. You're looking for a brush. And we still haven't gotten around to using the good brushes. We're still having them. I even had a special cup for them. Setting them off to the side, not touching them yet. You saw my Dracula debut. What did you use to build up to hill? A stack a 20 millimeter stand on a 40 millimeter stand? No, I used, um, I used uh, a piece of foam. I took pictures of it. I didn't want to do it on camera because I was in and out from the garage a lot. But I had a stand and then I had this pink foam that's the solid kind. And it wasn't very thick. It's maybe, you know, about this thick. And I laid a part of it on it. And then I sanded it down outside. Very little, just to kind of get it kind of rough. And then I put the goop and stuff on it. But what was nice is because there's foam in there, I could poke the I could poke the um, the stakes in there and it'll hold so um, it, it worked out it was quick to do and it worked out wonderful and I just put a really thin coating of um, of the goop on it so it would dry quick because I needed it to be dry in like three or four hours instead of normal so I could paint it and finish it and yeah that's it I did it off camera because it would have taken me twice as long if I was doing it on camera so, um, I did take some pictures. I'll have to post those in the, um, on this channel what it is. But once you see the one picture, it's pretty obvious. That's, that stuff's really useful to use. The, it, the foam that is, um, it's, I guess it's high density. It's not made of the little round pieces. It's high density. It's, uh, I have a piece of it here. And this stuff's hard to come by. I think it's very hard to get a hold of it now. Here you go. One chunk left over. This is just foam. Maybe this is a better picture of it. So I just cut a little sliver of it and laid it on top of it. And you could punch into this and it'll hold. So. Yeah, it's actually really good material. It's not super durable, but then neither are the skeletons. <laughs> so if you start damaging them, you'll, you'll break them before you end up doing the other stuff. But yeah. Yeah, so that's the camp that will only be used for Dracula. So in other words, when I play these guys, same army, different general, um, Knight General, um, though when I play the Valachians, they will not use the Impaled guys. That's only for Dracula. So, um, these guys, I'm going to build a little baggage element, a little 40 by 40, and that's going to be their camp. So, it'll double as a, as a baggage element for a collision course. So, I guess I probably need to do that next, instead of doing the Polish allies. I just a matter, matter of painting like three horses and making a little diorama. So. Yeah, I went from not liking to do the camps to, ah, I like the camps now. something to add atmosphere to it.
Yeah, that's the high density foam is really useful. The one that breaks off in little circles is a is a pain. It, there's a lot of litter in it, and I'm not a fan of it. The other one I think gets used for like insulation and stuff like that. Lighten this up some. You know, the part I'm really itching to get to this guy is the shield. That's what I live for, painting is a shield. Okay. I had a hell of a time finding Moldavian heraldry type things. But I did find some. This is somebody's artwork. Hmm. I didn't know that was an actual Moldavian. And I'll show you in a second. That's, I think, what we're going to do is a shield. It doesn't necessarily follow the, the rules of, um, of Western heraldry with colors and stuff. Let me see if I can move this out of the way. Let's, uh, let's, let's make this smaller. Thanks for the info. Most of the camps I've made so far are baggage stands. Multi-use for other game systems. Makes sense to me. Makes complete sense to me. Here we go. This is the... This is the picture. That gentleman right there. 
So a green shield with almost some anchor type symbol, almost like um, something the Seleucids would have. So that's what we're going to go with. And it doesn't follow the rules of heraldry because you've got green and blue touching each other. But I think that will look just fine. That's what we're going to do with this guy. I don't have a lot to go on. It was either that or do some white and blue stripes, which, you know, seems a little too uh, basic. You know, I want it to have kind of an eastern, eastern flair to it. Okay. So... Uh, we can leave this guy on the screen for me. And the first thing we're gonna do is let's pick our green out. There's a possibility. It's just a starting point on the green. Just a starting point on it. Make it easier. Should make it easier. This would be okay too, but I bet it's super watery. This says park green flat, but it's got a little too blue, too much blue in it. And then, of course, we have this one that we can just bring up to where we need it to. I think we're going to go with that one. Change my mind. This one. Thanks for the info. Yeah, man, that's what I'm here for. I don't have all the answers. I have some of them. I love sharing stuff that works for me. And sometimes it's just luck of the Irish that it turned out that way. Not that I'm Irish. Actually, I don't know anybody who's Irish. Oh, what a disaster. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's one of these. This is one of these bottles that was so old and it like dry wadded. Yeah, we won't be using you. As a matter of fact, I probably need to replace the screen. <laughs> this one is goes nowhere. Okay, that green is out. That is just a broken, that is just a morass of a color. This one's, this one's too, too much of the wrong color. So we're going to have to go to this one. What a disaster that was. I could use that. I just didn't feel like fighting with it and making a mess. I didn't have my heart set on that green anyways. Hey, things don't go according to plan here all the time. All right. Paint this whole shield in this watery color that doesn't cover great.
one level. Mm, too much, I think. Too much. It's probably enough. Because we need to mix the blue. And we're going to make the blue a little brighter than it looks on that picture, just so it stands out some. Let's put that away. Let's find a blue candidate. Hard to see through the light. Intense blue. I have a feeling this, this may or may not be the right one. So now we're going to do the same thing, but we need to use a brush that's a lot thinner. All right. So the shape is a ver the shape is a vertical line. And we're going to drop it right here through the middle. got I can't even see it can't even see it on here let's try that again let's try that again okay it's like an arrowhead at the bottom semicircle at the top and then another semicircle at the bottom in between the two let's clean this up with the green we have You're not going to be able to see anything on there. It's so damn dark. That's just kind of a guide to clean it up. So we're going to just work on the blue right now. Let's get some of this white over here. We can mess with it. Let's add more of this blue. You can see a little bit better now, I think. Oh, I can't see it on the screen. I've got the other thing in the way. Let's, let's add a little bit more of this white to lighten this up.
now I'm gonna get this I'm gonna take this picture off of it because it's really interfering with what I'm seeing here okay doesn't look like much let's go back to the green I said, this might actually look kind of weird because we're actually used to it. We're used to those rules of heraldry. And the rules of heraldry are, is if you have colors, you know, you've got white that represents silver and you have yellow that represents gold. And if you've got red and yellow, um, if we've got red and blue on it, they're either subdivided by white or yellow or some combination of the two but they don't touch each other. I don't know who decided that that's the rule, but that's the rule. And whether, you, whether or not you know it, just by being exposed to heraldry and stuff over the years, if you end up seeing a shield that's red and blue next, next to each other, it just looks wrong, you know? Um, after seeing enough heraldry that follows these rules, you're like, something looks wrong about the shield. And then maybe after a while, it dawns on you that, oh yeah, those, those colors really shouldn't be touching. And it's just from our exposure. Of these colors and patterns over time that you get used to. How the colors behave around each other whether or not you're even aware of it Again, we're going to keep working that. We're going to keep working that green up, and we're going to use yellow to lighten it. I don't think we're going to use. I don't think we're going to use white. All right, let's, let's go up a level. Little bit of little bit of yellow there. Add a little bit more yellow. And a tiniest of whites.
Okay, Let's see if we can get a good shot at this. First start, get it out of my hand so I don't shake it all over the place. Oh, lighting here just isn't going to behave, is it? It's, where's my mouse at? Almost time for a new wet palette sheet. You're right. Almost. Almost. Mr. Mike. Hey, it looks like shit because it's shiny. We might go back and tinker it some more. But that's it. That's what that drawing kind of looks like. Let's tinker with it some more. There we go. Much better. Much better. Am I still zoomed in? Ish. There it is. All right. This guy's got boots on. And it's not painting whatever the hell shield design I want. That's that's a little too much freedom. I don't want that kind of freedom. You know? You kind of have to go with what we think they look like, maybe. Educated guesses. I think we'll give them a light colored lance. That should pop out nicely. We'll use this dark sand for that. Mix it with some black. And then we'll go and uh, detail some of his armor. Hey, if I get this guy done today, I can, I can live with that. I can live with that. Blowing everywhere. What is this? I think the fan is just too too high. Must be like all the way to the max. Let's see here. Let's go to let's go to three. You've been watching one of my game nights with the barbarian theme. Wanted to watch someone play Galatians. 
Did somebody play Galatians? The Barbarian Boogaloo? Or I was going to, and I didn't. Those guys fought naked. And um, some of them anyways. There's, my, there's your incentive to do it. Paint a bunch of wieners. I think it's the Gauls that had a unit that was naked and painted blue. A blue man group. Everything here in that color. Core color. white to that.
Okay, and then we have a little spear tip up there, lance tip. That guy makes me think of Don Quixote for some reason. I got a guy who looks just like Don Quixote. You want to see him? guy on the end and him man so washed out looking on this this light is just too powerful is what it is yeah this guy and this guy these two and they're actually figures that are very hard to find pictures of they're a company called Naismith. And they're actually their Conquistador lines. So this is not the horses they came with. These guys are uh, horses by uh, Viking Forge. They may have been somebody else's horses first. The horses these, these Conquistadors came with look like llamas. They, they really were are sad looking so that's for my book 67 uh, I'm sorry book 60 uh, book 468 I want to say E and F army my early renaissance very late uh, medieval Spanish so Okay. Let's get the metal out. Maybe we already did that part. Yeah. Let's see if we can skip a step and not highlight with the same lead belcher. We're going to go up one to one that's one step brighter, which I believe is called Iron Breaker. Five viewers, welcome. I'm out of liquids again. Jeez. I drink a lot. And then I'm talking a lot, so. figures on this stand all have long hair 
And they also have mustaches. No beards, just mustaches. Stephen the Great is represented with light brown hair. Here's the genie with the light brown hair. So one of these other guys is going to have black hair, and the other one's going to be blonde. Because the other guy carrying it, the, the shield he's going to have, he's going to have the arms of Moldavia, which are mostly yellow and red. I'm not going to make him the blonde one. I'm going to make this guy the blonde one. There, there's my logic. It's a contrast thing. All right. So now, this to highlight. I think we can close that. And then no oil isn't that necessary. But what the Nolan Oil allows you to do is actually darken your metallic shade one step past the darkest one you have. So if you have the darkest metal you have isn't dark enough for you, then take the darkest one you have and drop some Nolan Oil on it and it's going to shade it down one level more, you know, for the shadows and stuff. Most of the time I've painted without using Nolan Oil because I honestly didn't know about it. I just on a whim decided to try it. And I'm pretty happy with it. The thing I like the most about it is that it dries really fast. It's not like i got to wait overnight for it to dry. The Nolan Oil, that is. If it was a, I can't move forward until this is dry, business I wouldn't like it so much so Also going to take the next one up which I believe is the old mithril silver we still have from the 1980s you 
use it over silver. To me, it makes a better metal work. Original mithril silver from days gone by. Okay, that's probably good enough for him. We said this guy was going to be blonde. We can use that same, yeah, we can use that same uh, brown that's there. Should be fine. And um, let's use this right. No, not that one. Wrong one. It's over here. Yeah, it's about time to replace this. And it's plenty wet. It's over here. Okay, what we got left on? We got boots. I'm gonna use kind of light colored boots. Everything else on them is kind of dark. Where's my coat the arms here?
choose the Russian brown. Let's use a Russian brown. Zoom this out a little bit. Squeaky. I don't get, didn't get none on me. Now, this guy has some colors of the straps on here. And I don't think I want to make them just a brown color. Tell you what, my back is already giving me issues. So I'm going to finish this guy's boots here and then we're done for the evening. I don't know how long was I? An hour, an hour and a half, something like that? I'm 46 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got only a few things left to paint on, and he's done. And then the shield bearer will be the same, except his uh, he'll have a different. And then actually the general is going to have jack on him. He's pretty barren. But as always, thanks for stopping by, keeping me company. We've got you guys, catch you guys later in the week.